a Maybe. private message from somebody to ask. The class we're talking about is called Children Book Pro. That's a class that's gonna comes out in roughly two weeks ish, uh, and it's a just, just super intensive class on just doing children's books. Me, Will, and Jake teaching the whole thing. Probably twenty to thirty hours. Still haven't figured out how much video we we have, but we're it's cool. We're showing stuff that we have never taught before. So some of the lectures I've never taught in any of my classes before. It's pretty fun. If you go to yeah, childrensbookpro.com, you can sign up and get see some of the stuff we're talking about. Yeah. And this kind of, this, I think this is our first, here, here. We, we've been thinking a lot about how to structure SVS Learn going forward um, because there's more things we want to do for it. And there's, and there's certain, like we have students who are moving beyond what some of the things we offer at SVS are doing. So what we've kind of been working on is that SVS Learn will be really focused on fundamentals and learning uh, the basics up to like an intermediate level. And then, and then creating classes like, or courses like this children's book pro course, where it's very specific to children's books. So it's not like you're scattered all over SVS trying to figure out like, what do I got to do to, to figure out how to do children's books? But you, you essentially, um, I don't, I don't want to say graduate from, from SVS because you might still want to refresh refresher on all that stuff, but um, essentially you age into or level up into one of these more focused courses like Children's Book Pro. So that's kind of how we're hoping things work there. Oh, Jeremy saying he took copious notes in video four. I think that's the one that I did on the, just the overview of the of how to make a children's book. Just went yeah, yeah. start to finish. So if you sign up at Children's Book Pro. We have some free videos and that's kind of what they're talking about there. So there's like six of them, I think total. And we do go into some of the content, but man, when you get into the class, this stuff is deep. It is, I would say the deepest class on children's books ever taught in the history of mankind. I, yeah, I'm not exaggerating. I'll back you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> but it is good. It is good. <laughs> it's great. I mean, I mean, it's three of us and we all signed off on it. Um, how do you know if you're ready for the pro course? Ali is asking, um, it's good for, for any level. We're basically going, we assume no knowledge, but the better you are, the uh, if you do the class in its entirety, you'll end up with a full portfolio. If you're a really good artist and you're able to take all that information, that may be a pro portfolio for you and you start getting work. If you're a beginner, you'll still end up with a portfolio. It just might be one that you take the class again and after having the knowledge the first time, and the portfolio just gets better and better right. until you're ready to actually put it out there. So there's a, there's a lot of instances where we'll talk about a specific thing that's covered in a fundamentals class, but we'll be applying it specifically to children's books. And then we'll say, if you don't feel, you know, confident enough with, with um, say composition, go take the SVS learn fundamental course on composition and then come back and you could see how that applies to children's books. If you've already taken that course, then, um, you know, then you're going to just, you know, be able to take what we're saying about children's books and easily apply it. So it's in that way, it's, you know, if you're more intermediate or you're more advanced, um, there's less, I guess, homework for you. Whereas if you are new and a beginner, you're getting this you information about how to yeah. do children's books, but then you're also getting, backup information on how to um, uh, like level up to, or get to that level of where you need to be. So hopefully that helps. And um, a question over here. Are we going to get some graphic novel courses or how did you? Yeah. That's the books? next one we're talking about either comics or graphic novels. Ideally SVS is a solid foundation. And then you're kind of branched out to these it's really, like the, really high level focus majors. The um, hub and spoke method. I think it's better than regular college because it is so specific to what you want to do. And obviously the flagship is going to be Children's Book Pro because that's, you know, mainly where we are, but we're, you know, going to bring in other teachers and, you know, Jake obviously has done graphic novels too. So he'll be doing that one. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be pretty cool. There's a couple more questions real quick. How uh, is it good for me if I'm already working in the field? I'll tell you this, if I had some of this information after I was already working in the field, if I had this information, my books would have been better and they would have been faster and they would have been less stressful. Like, like I said, just putting the content together forced us to all three to sort of 
dig really deep and be like, okay, how do we tell a good story? Yeah. It's not just like, oh, you most children's book classes. Oh, here's here's a dummy, and you know, here's a pagination for a dummy, and now just make your dummy. Well, how do you tell the story? You know, we're we're mm-hmm. going into that. Like, how do you make a really engaging character? Not how do you draw a character, but how do you even know if your character works in terms of the narrative? And same with the backgrounds and props and all right. that kind of stuff too. So uh, so yeah, I. I I would take this course at, after doing 30 books. I, it could I can me. tell you after teaching this course and because the three of us are teaching it. So it's like, I'm learning from Lee and Will and they're also learning from me. And I'm telling you, after we've gone through this, my next book is going to be so much better than my last one. <laughs> or same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited. Sure. I'm excited. Time come we... in for this class. It's going to, if you did it in 10 weeks, it's going to drip over the course of 10 weeks. The content will be um, released in little segments. Um, that's how long it'll take 10 minutes, but, uh, or 10, 10 weeks, but your weekly assignments could take up some time. You don't have to do it in 10 weeks. It could take 20 weeks. Um, it's, it's in depth. It's going to be all over the place in terms of how quick people do it. It's a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you, you, if you want to do a book dummy, like that's the thing we're not selling like the easy way, you know, this is not the easy button. We're just giving you the the sort of the streamlined um uh, you know i guess the 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 path so you're not like wandering weird paths but like a streamlined path on here's how you do it it's still like if it takes you a month to do an illustration it's going to take a month to do an illustration you know or (laughs) a week to do an illustration so it's sort of that's where the you know, it fluctuates depending on how long you actually take to do your art, but the information sort of download into your brain is the 10 weeks. Yeah. Got a couple more questions. Let's bang through this. Cause we got it. We got to get to our, our, our bracket. Yeah. Um, somebody's asking, um, let's see, Gus is asking, uh, is there going to be live? It's going to have feedback live. It's going to be the recorded lessons is the first section that downloads. And then uh, as we, we're we hiring a bunch of teachers now, there will be a guided version of it. Uh, obviously, that's going to be an upgrade because you're having you know, one-on-one feedback with an actual pro. So that's going to be really cool. Do you have to sign up right away um, to get in the guided version? No, because that's going to be the second thing that we mm-hmm. un- unravel. So the first one is just the videos because we got to line up all these teachers and stuff. This, How much will this... it cost? Oh, yeah, go for it. It's, it's, it's 497 bucks for the videos and we're still locking down uh, how much the guided version will be because we want to make sure our teachers are paid and make sure that they're invested enough to give you guys really good feedback. I don't want anybody mm-hmm. phoning these things in. I want them really right. sitting down and focused on exactly. your work. Um, the, so um, the unguided version, I guess, or the self-directed um, version we are having a weekly Q and A session live on Zoom. So if you feel like you've hit a roadblock, you know, come to that Zoom. We could talk it through. We could see what's, you know, where you're having problems, what kind of questions you're having, and that's going to be with sort of your cohort cohort that signs up for for it. Yeah. Somebody's asking how much it is. I'm just going to type it in there. Four ninety seven. It's right around five hundred. Just yeah. under five hundred bucks. All right. right. Should we get going on critiquing? I'm going to share my screen. Let's do it. Boom. Share that thing. I will say this one, one last thing about that. that We're we're limiting enrollment for this first one because we're doing the weekly Zoom session with me and Will and Jake uh, and possibly David Hone as well. Uh, So just to let you know, this first one is not a wide net, um, but the, the people who we will choose, pick for that first group are going to be signed up at childrensbookpro.com. So if you sign up in your email, that's the pool that we're going to let in. Cool. All right. This, this month it was the travelers in. So um, ideally you, um, you created a traveler last month and, you know, figured all that out. And we had a bunch of great entries that last month, this month um, your traveler is out at about, they need a rest for the night. Where do they stay for that night? Where do they rest? And so the idea was a fairy tale, a fairy tale in. We got a ton of cool entries. We got a couple of entries for people who weren't um, members of SVS. So we had to, <laughs> we had to get rid of them, eliminate them. 
So everyone here are SVSers or bunnies, rabbits, whatever we want to call ourselves. And uh, tell us what you want to call yourselves in the in the um, in the chat. We, I, I like I like the rabbits. The rabbits is good. I like that too. SVSers is a little ham fisted. Um, but here we go. Our first two um, our first two challengers. Uh, arena members are Garrett and Chris. And uh, I, these guys are not strangers to Critique Arena. Mm -hmm. It's cool to see them here. Um, and so how this works, if you're new here, what we do is um, we each say something we love about the piece, and then we let the, uh, we let the poll go. And you guys get to vote which one moves to the next, to the next round. So I'll take Garrett. And uh, what I really like about this, and I think its strong point is, First, it is structurally sound drawing wise. Uh, that doesn't mean the building itself has to be structurally sound, but like the design, this looks like it, it, it's just very solid. The perspective is there, the volumes are there. I love all that. That's probably my favorite thing about this. Secondly, it's just a cool design to have like uh, this, this like turret tower thing that you know may have been in the countryside um, withering away and then you know some medieval entrepreneur comes up and turns it into a hotel and you know I, I think it's I think it's fun so that's uh, that's Garrett's tell us what you think Lee about good ones to start off with really exciting Chris. to see this I will say this the overall quality of this particular month was the highest I've ever seen I mean we and we've, we've done that over time I mean there's been a gradual increase in quality just anyway but just the general grouping it was we had i don't know how many we had like a hundred but we had such a huge amount after the first you know we go through the first round pull them all over and then try to go through that group and then pull that over and go through that group it was crazy and so you can kind of see how cool this is uh this one's chris's uh, love absolutely love the concept i mean every I, i'm instantly drawn in just because it's not something i'm used to seeing i mean we've all seen little windows and stuff on on trees before and, and maybe even like a little fairy village on a stump. But the, the addition of the little cafe really nails it for me. That is such a fun and, and unique detail that I'm instantly brought in. And then the, uh, the mushroom step. So concept, concept's killing it here. And then the application su supports that as well. All right, should I launch the, uh, um, the poll machine, whatever we call the, it? <laughs> the poll. Um, <laughs> poll maker 3000 <laughs> <laughs> okay here we go i just gotta find the button all right you guys see that you guys see that poll oh yeah unfortunately up. people streaming on uh youtube aren't going to be able to see it because uh, only the people who are at the zoom meeting can vote and the zoom people at the zoom meeting are uh, members of scs learn as uh, subscribers and this is just one of the perks of becoming a subscriber is you get to vote. Hey, Jake, can you back up and show them side by side real quick? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, good. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> there we go. This is a tough one. Yeah, so base your decision on how creative the environment is combined with how well it is designed and rendered. All right, I'm going to give you, Jake, I'm not going to guess which one wins, but I'm going to guess the spread. Mm. This one's okay. going to have... An 11% spread. That's my guess. Okay. Okay. Well, I could tell you you're wrong already. <laughs> One is- How, how, how wrong? Uh, about a 50%, 45. It's 50 and 45? Uh, about 50. No, no, no. It's a, a, a difference of about 45%. I'm going to oh, end wow. the poll now. Okay. And um, share it. Share the results. You guys see that? Yeah. So exactly so, like I said, 50%. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, congratulations to Chris. And I, I, uh, we'll move we're going to do down. a little, we're going to do a little crit of, of, of the one that didn't make it. Yep. And we'll continue to do that as things progress. All right. So looking at this, I think <clears throat> though it's drawn well and it's it has a ton of really good details in it you know fish and the horse head and 
you could tell it's probably next to an ocean or something because it has the seagulls there. <clears throat> At the end of the day, though, overall, it's just not super creative, right? There's like, I feel like this would work well as a background thing, but not as a, you know, a star location. Yeah. Does that make a, sense? It's sort of like, it's, it's like a set piece that works mm -hmm. really well. We're drawn expert level and colored expert level. I think it's gorgeous, but it's just not enough interest to, to balance out a, that cafe in the tree right. and pit it against it. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Yeah. So this is just, yeah. So <clears throat> better luck next time, but yeah. Again, now, really, now one really thing, you know, to, the, the takeaway there is when you're, when you're doing your comps and you're doing your thumbnails, the last question I always ask myself is why would someone care that I drew this? And if I can't answer that with a definite like thing, okay, this one's got this quality or this is what's unique about this piece. Um, what makes it really stand out? Then you got to go back to the sketches. And so this one, I'd be like, wow, I drew that really well, but what, why are people going to care about this one? And there's just like Jake was saying, there's just not enough to grab onto. It just looks, com it looks competent, mm -hmm. but there's not enough to care about. All right, next up, we have Georgios versus Catherine. Again, two very creative, creative ideas. And I think what I love about Georgios is um, this character is a holdover from last, last month, uh, that character made in the top 16. And this feels like such a solid um, connection to the world that he's building. That, that said, in and of by itself, I think it's just a it's just a great idea. You have like this um, the looming shark in. There's like a you know like a fake shark at the top here with the lighthouse. You know the light. It's like something I would expect to see at a theme park. You know mm. I could easily it see George just like getting a job at a theme park. So it's just a cool creative idea. All right, yeah, that's fine. Catherine. Catherine with a light bulb. Can you zoom in just a little bit? There's some. Fantastic mm -hmm. little details there. Oh man, just the just the general creativity of this is obviously going to win it. Just like the last one I was talking about, there's no way you guys will forget this image and the the illumin. Oh my gosh, that illumin. Catherine is right. She's my people because <laughs> those I say those kind of dumb puns all the time, um, but this is just so ingenious. I don't know what sparked it, but immediately. My another little metric I use for a quality illustration is: Do I want to know more? Do I want to know who who lives here? How is this thing made? What's the community look like? Is there a bunch of light bulbs hanging down for a whole community? Um, you know, how many people does this fit? It looks like there's you know multiple uh, people can be in each one of these things. I, it just begs so much storytelling, and I'm all in. Yeah, really cool. Okay, let's relaunch this poll. And hopefully you guys could see it, should be up there. I don't want to sway it, but I do have, um, I do like one of these better. I do. And it's probably not the one you think. <laughs> how, cri how cryptic is that? That's so cryptic. <laughs> Let's see. I haven't been checking the chat. How's the chat going? I'm over here hanging in there. Okay, good. Good, good. Um, has Catherine been in our critique arena before? Or is this the first time? Her style does her? not look familiar. It's got a delicate kind of almost pen pencil quality. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I would remember that. I feel I'm going like. to go to critiquearena.com where you can, anybody can go to critiquearena.com and check out who's um, won past critique arenas you can see everybody who's ever won um in critique arena so okay i think we're done here let me in the poll it's a lot closer than it was last time critiquearena.com critiquearena.com and the winner is Catherine. she heads to the next round so congratulations uh, okay i was gonna say that was gonna be uh, uh roughly 20 percent. that was gonna be my guess yeah. All right. Georgios, I 
actually you were my pick. I wanted you to, I wanted you to win <laughs> because I, f- I felt like no, no disrespect to, to Catherine. So I think it's a definitely, as Lee was saying, very creative, but I don't know if this fits fairy tale traveler in very well, you know, this, you this seems like as we move forward, we die, just zip it. Cause what? that's going to be pit. You can't talk about that. Oh, okay. 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 Fine. 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 Nobody listened to that. Anyways, what could he have done better? I don't see this being improved at all. Like, like this is really good. I think there's a couple of things. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Maybe it's like too much perspective on this side structurally. Well, it's, I think with it, without the addition of the shark is an amazing addition. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think overall it feels a little bit busy. I mean, that can be a cool thing too. People love to dive in and look at that, mm. but I almost want a focal point. And for me, the focal point is the shark. It does have the focal point because of that. But then there's so many other details that are fighting. I just wonder if it could have been simplified and still have this level of coolness. And and that's not easy to do. I mean, we're, we're doing the art director yeah. thing where we're saying, make it, make it pop, but then make it simpler. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's not easy to do. There's some of the stuff we're asking for, but I just wonder like those, those lines in the background, super heavy. I would definitely back off on those telephone mm. pole lines, mm-hmm. man, those are heavy and they're drawing a lot of contrast from that background. And so I, yeah, I just think I would call. I'd go, go through and pick out where you want people to look and simplify the other stuff. You can still keep it in. I mean, Will Terry's a master at that with his hundred things and all that. He, you never are confused about where to look in a Will Terry illustration. Um, but this one has the, you know, the character also pulls us down there. The text, the sharks up top. It's just there's a lot of bouncing around for me. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good note. It's a good note. I like it. All right. Next up, we have Kyle Boudet and Valerie Light. I think that's how you pronounce pronounce that french obviously french <laughs> good attempt name. on that <laughs> what's that i said that's that's a good attempt i, I would have just good, said good. kyle and that yeah, way i kyle. don't have to like, here we have force kyle um <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so let's zoom in here um uh, i think it's obvious why this made it to the top 16 there's some obvious craft going on here um it's it's just magnificently done. You, you, I would expect to see this in like a Leica, um, good call film, you know? Yeah. Um, paranormal, paranormal kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a cool name. Les, les skelet in skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> I love the puns. Yeah. Two, two puns in, um, so yeah. So just, it's just an excellent, cool, um, design and I think I think it it it's neat to see something in 3D and and to be crafted so well. All right, I mean, that want... is like that is like train professional like train model level to me. This right here. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, huh? can't you just picture the whole world with that? Um, anyway, yeah. I'll do, okay, I'll do yeah. that. It's good stuff. Yeah, as there people are saying, don't make me choose. I I understand that. Um, can you zoom in? I want to see what the name. Now I want to know what all the names of these little ends are. I didn't actually this is see the Grassy Gables Inn. Grassy all Gables Inn. Welcome, in. except bards. <laughs> nice. Got the little characters going in there too. Look at um, that. So- Rooms to rent and good hot food. Perfect. We need puns though. Everything has to have a pun now. Well, there's a rhyme. Um, Gables stables. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> Um, I, I, I really like the, the amount of detail that she put into this thing. That roof is absolutely killer. That would cause me a lot of grief if I had a grass roof and like how to render it. So I'm sure she used reference because it's all really, really perfect. It's really whimsical. Um, and I like that there is that two point perspective, but then she's almost opened it up a little bit. Like if you track these back to the vanishing points, they, they don't make a ton of sense, but I'm glad for that. It's not so stiff as like a, Sometimes when people start in a two point drawing, it just, it locks into that box. You know what I mean? That two point yeah, box. Yeah. And this really breaks it. It kind of opens up on the side. Um, there's a technique you guys can use to do that by the way, but 
maybe I'll go into that in the, in the children's book pro class um, where you can move the vanishing points and do that intentionally. But, um, and I'm sure she did that. The detail's fantastic, but then handled in a really creative way. So much detail. Does, do you think this is traditional? It uh, almost yeah. looks like watercolor. It is. I could, I could tell. It looks, you could tell because of the way it's scanned on the edges here. Yeah, it yeah. Off. Um, how do you yeah, mold it? Valerie says 90% watercolor. I know what she added in Photoshop, some little, little glow around the window. Is that right, Valerie? Probably. That's what, that's what I would have done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to do that in, in untraditional watercolor. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Should we vote? Let's vote. These are good. And, and very, I mean, almost similar palettes, uh, similar, some similar shapes, actually, if you kind of blur your vision. Really good. Okay. So we're going to keep this thing up here. You know, we have 135 people here today. That's a good turnout. Dang. That's a good, that is a good one. Valerie, do you know how to do that glow in traditional watercolor? How do you do it? Lee? It's tricky. I learned a technique. I had to come up with a technique because a lot of my illustrations have that glow. And so I just paint them regular, um, no, no glow, hard edge. And then I take a little bit of um, white paint in an airbrush and then I blow around it so it's mm. just white and then I glaze the yellow back on top of it. That's makes, that's like the Drew Struzan effect, right? Kind mm -hmm. of, if you don't know Drew Struzan, he's the guy that does all the like Star Wars, Indiana Jones posters from the 80s and 90s. Okay, I'm into this poll, sharing the results. We have a clear winner. Um, Valerie goes to the next round. That's awesome. I, love, love Valerie's piece, but I'm bummed that that other one's not moving forward. I absolutely love that thing. I'm bummed too. And I think what, um, what it lacks in creativity, he makes up for in um, construction execution. So I, I want to say this, like, um, if this was just a drawing, you know, how there's really, you know, if we're comparing a drawing to a drawing, there isn't really much to this design. There's, there's no gimmick. There's, I mean, there's the skeleton, the skeleton, but, um, um, and, and, you know, obviously you can see there's a little bit of a, a skull in the design here, but I don't know, it's not enough to be intentional. So hmm. I kind of feel like this just needs it just needs like that extra X factor to it, to in the creative creativity side, to really push it over the top. What do you think? I think Kyle, I think Kyle could sell these things. I think people would buy oh, yeah. them. I would I so, would buy yeah. it if I had a whole little shelf with this kind of stuff on it. I would be so happy. Um, no, I agree. I agree with what you said. Um, but it, it's it's so well done. And like I said, I do start to picture one of those worlds, like the the, the Leica animation stuff, like Paranorman and Coraline, even. Um, it's just so complete. I mean, you can almost picture what the world around it would look like. Uh, I hate to send Kyle off and say, hey, go ahead and make a whole world like this because I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it's all but I want to ask. <laughs> I want to know where Kyle keeps everything. Because I, I mean, if you go to his Instagram account, he's always constantly like doing one of these every week, whether it's a maquette, you know, character or vehicle. Really? Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, and um, it's so, in fact- Does he sell them? <laughs> Kyle, do you sell these things? I don't know if he sells them, but he's gonna sell them I now. Have, Sometimes have he says. Here. Can you see on my uh, my screen? Uh huh. This is, is a a Kyle original. He did Skull Chaser. Oh my gosh! Do you see that? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> he, I, I saw that on Twitter like a year or two years ago, and I was like, if that ever. If you were ever I'll put your um, put your either website or your Instagram in the in the chat so people can see some of this stuff. Yeah, go check them out. All right, next challenge. Okay, we have Melissa versus Ruth, and two very similar ones. This is did you pick the did you pick the pairings? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. I and it was a little I random. I didn't, I didn't go in and massage it at all. I oh, just kind of said you did because this seems like a this seems like a perfect match with the little curly Q <laughs> detail. You could have claimed I, it, and I would have been like, "Oh, it's great, Jake. Good job." 
I, yeah, I'll, well, I'll take whatever credit um, you want <laughs> I'm me to give have. you subliminal credit anyway. You just subliminally know. Right. All right, Melissa, uh, I think she knocked it out of the park with this one. This is such a such a cool design. It was easy to stick into the top 16 because it's just so darn creative. Um, she did a, a literal fairy tale in, and if you look, each one of these sections is a different fairy tale. Sleeping Beauty, but she's not very pretty. Um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. We've got uh, Cinderella with her slipper, Three Little Pigs, Jack of the Beanstalk, Rapunzel, Three Little Bears. Um, you can see the level that people are going to now for these contests. This is yeah. exactly what we want. This, level. this is not, f- not phoned in on this one. Not phoned in at all. And this is one of those things where like, is it traditional or is it digital? Yeah, you know, right if, if it is digital, she's definitely got some textures scanned that she's mm-hmm. putting in there. Anyway. All right. That's really good. Ruth, again, another killer piece. <laughs> yeah. The squash. And can you go up to that little guy on the swing at the mm-hmm. top? The little mole. <laughs> yeah, that's so fun. <laughs> got a mole, got a hedgehog, got a bunch of rats. <laughs> Got a little dragon and a frog. Well, this this holds kind of the holds the theme in that you guys are playing with shape and concept. Hey, there we go. There we go. Jake's out of control. Put on your seatbelt, folks. Um, I I pushed the wrong button. (laughs) But the the silhouettes are so amazing. If I were to even color this whole thing in with a sharpie, and we we say that all the time on here, focus on your silhouette and, and talk about the sharpie idea. If I colored this whole thing in, it would be still be a really engaging, interesting shape. You would almost still know that it's gonna work as an illustration just from the overall mm-hmm. silhouette. And then you get the benefit of all this super creative detail. And then I will say very expertly handled in the rendering. Um, some of the things that we have talked repeatedly about on, on both this critique and just in our podcast and everything is the uh, over-reliance of a soft brush. And this one's just crisp where it needs to be crisp. There's some still some, you know, gradiated lighting and stuff like that. So it shows a control of soft edges, but it's uh, the application of paint is, is expert on this one. Okay. Let's pull launcher, launch that pull. Launch that uh, pole. Relaunch. Here we go. Pole Launcher 3000. That's what it is. But yeah, it's the Pole Launcher 3000. <laughs> well, let me make it so you guys can see both of them. Melissa versus Ruth. Uh, Critique Arena is fun. I really do look forward to this every month. Yeah, it's it's a blast. You know? I'm glad we I'm glad we're doing this. I guess props to Will Terry for coming up with it, right? <laughs> We should take credit for that. Why would we give Will credit for that when he's not even here? <laughs> Good point. Good point. I think nice it was job. you and I who came up yeah. with it, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We thought there was nothing out there. And we, we called Will and told him we were doing it. Right. <laughs> 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 okay, we have a 92% voting rate, which is good enough for me. If it's good enough for you, I'm going to end this poll. Let's do it. Wait, wait, let me guess and, the percentage. Okay, guess. I'm going to say it's 22%. Here we go. Can you see that? So stinking close. Yeah. 21%. Mm. No, 19%. It's actually, well, it's actually 30%, but whatever. So anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Jake's having some trouble with some math. <laughs> uh, how much? There we go. Yeah. Melissa moves to the uh, to the next round. Congrats, Melissa, Ruth. I think um, the only, I, I don't think Ruth did anything that can be improved on up on here. I think people fell in love with that, um, the concept of all the different stuff being in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I don't, I, there's, I mean, you look at composition, you look at character design, you look at uh, value control, you look at, at color control, shape control, all that stuff is here and 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 very well done. I don't, I don't know. Well, is there anything sticking out to you that would you would change? No, I mean, okay. If, if I were to go in and change anything, it would just be like this edge handling here. Like this is a good chance to, I'm just going to show you something. We don't ever do this, but I'm going to do it today. Um, I'm going to do a little, Demo bit time. Of, a little bit of a driver, but if you just go in here and like 
add some grass stuff like this oh, like that you know just to kind of break that up and like maybe you know there's like little rock things that like show that it's going off a little All vignette sudden, technique sort like, of kind of thing yeah you've just I got turn it like, off and turn it back on yeah that's you nice know what I'm that little thing can make a big difference hope that helps okay let's move down all the way down here to the bottom to when liz is versus isabel um, we need a little song for when you're doing a demo drawing <laughs> with jake he's gonna show you what to do drawing How about with jake. demo time come on grab your friends demoing <laughs> will never end <laughs> With Jake the, <laughs> Jake the jar and Lee the human. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Lee the penguin for some reason. I don't know why. No, you're you're the, I'm the dog. You're the human. I don't know. I don't like ping, I'd rather be a penguin. <laughs> All right, this I'm excited for this one. This is uh, these. I hated putting these two together. It means one of them has to lose, and I don't want either to lose. So. Uh, let me zoom in here. This is Liz Orton, and she does the buzz in. Um, it's it's a, I mean, look at it. I don't have we to. We got say it. We've got it. We've got a pun right from the start. We've got a pun, and yeah, then buzzing. it's an expert level drawing. Yep, mead, honey, nectar. You know they're selling honey here. Honey for your journey. Look at the the little um, the slats. You know, like the. Remember when Smart. houses used to have those, <laughs> like doors. like the saloons, but they're shaped like <laughs> bee wings. Um, it's just expertly done. I want to see the this whole world. I want to see this graphic novel about a bee that runs this in and all the interesting characters that come in and out, or a children's book, or anything. Who cares? Anyways, that's it. Isabel, another stellar entry. So good, you know. It's funny that you're funny that you're talking about Adventure Time because that's instantly where I go with some of these shapes. Mm -hmm. um, also, that Emily Fleisch is that how you say her name for the graphic novel? You know who I'm talking about? Oh yeah, yeah. Emily? I don't know what her last name is. Um, anyway, very very contemporary style with these shapes. The 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 wood detailing is is absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, I mean, it just looks it looks very very clean. And like I said, it's a very modern and sort of specific style. I would love to see this on a full spread with characters and stuff. Uh, it would it would yeah. definitely get you children's book work for sure. Oh yeah, I could see this, easily see this as a children's book. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the details too, like. Yeah, super fun. All that stuff. And so simple, okay. it's hard to pull off simple. We've talked about that before. It's like simple is, uh, as simple is simple, but it's not easy. It doesn't mean it's easy. And it's it, it really isn't if you try to do it, especially if you have a complicated style. Um, it's tough to pull that off. Yeah. 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 Did you watch a bunch of Adventure Time? Have you seen a I bunch of that? I loved the first couple of seasons and then it went sort of wild. It, it went got, wild it lost, and then it, yeah, it, and then it ended. <laughs> yeah. I can see why it ended because it just like. After 10. <laughs> yeah, it was too much. It changed. His voice we, changed. We have like all of the Venture Time graphic novels too. I haven't, I haven't read any of them. I should really? though. I mean, the, the yeah. early seasons were so fun and creative and I thought they were, uh, what, what got kind of crazy after the first, like I think four seasons, five, somewhere around there, uh, they started getting real abstract and um, mm. I didn't know what they were doing anymore. It was almost like, <sighs> just complete was like we're talking about he-man that's what he-man did too like completely the <laughs> wildest stories and that's where they went to or like uncle grandpa if you've, if you've yeah. seen uncle grandpa same kind of thing like what is even happening okay i'm sharing the results and here we go mm. that's a bigger difference than that than i would have thought same here same here um but we do have a clear a clear winner which mm -hmm. is Liz. She moves on. She moves on to the next round. The only thing that I would do with um, with Isabel's, hold on, I got to move the pole. It's still sitting right in the middle of my screen. 
Um, all the shapes in here, you, I think you could vary the shapes a lot more. I, I like the little pointed piece, but a lot of the shapes almost look like that Hershey's Kiss. They're just almost overly round. Um, I think there could be a little more variety there. And some of the values start to get lost. Like the character on that rock really does become secondary. Now I know this is about the location, so it doesn't bother me in this context, but just to note like he's getting lost a little bit. Yeah, so I think like this is essentially the silhouette. It's a Hershey kiss. And and that in and of itself, I mean, it's it's perfectly balanced and mirrors each side. And typically what you want to do is, you know, something like this, just to give it a little bit of uh, variance to it. Mm -hmm. Or you want to do something like, you know, like this, but then you have like something smaller to it, or you have a shape that breaks out of that. Anything you could do to break up the silhouette, you know, maybe you have stuff coming out of it like that. And yeah, it just needs a little little more shape design, I, I think. Maybe yeah. even the windows just being a different shape would have, would have accomplished yeah, I that. Mean, yeah, you go in there, and you got a big window, but then you have like little tiny ones, you know. Drawing with Jake. Drawing with Jake, he's gonna show you what to do. <laughs> like yours, like yours better. All right, we got Joel versus Kelly. Another two wow amazing pieces. I don't and know you how didn't, you, guys... you didn't you didn't pick these on purpose because these are very like all of these have been really good battles. Yeah, they look seated. I I zoomed out and I just put everything on the board. And just started filling in blanks and think there was one or two where the names were already in place. So I moved their pieces, switched them around so I didn't have to retype the names out <laughs> from the last, from oh, the okay. last arena. <laughs> That's how um, we pick winners is, is if you've just won in last month, we're just going to pick you again so we don't have to type. Right. Do they already have your name on there? <laughs> All right, Joel. No, it's actually interesting that... Just because you've been in Critique Arena does not mean you'll make it in the top 16 again because there's always new people, new challengers showing up. And just because you've won Critique Arena doesn't mean you're going to win it again because there's always someone, you know. I think I'm going to say this. I think last year we did have some people win multiple times. I don't think that's going to happen again. The, no. co the competition has gotten really steep. I mean, look at these pieces right here on the screen right now. For real. For real. How could one how could one person dominate when they've got this level? So here we go. Um, <laughs> here we go. I just thought of a pun for this one. So it's Tavern on the Marsh. You could have called it the Marsh Inn and then have like an alien theme to it, or it could be on Mars. Whatever. Very Missed Jake opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Very Jake. <laughs> no. I think this is, I honestly, I mean, there's a reason we, we picked this one to go in the top 16. It's got just a, 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 it has such a solid structure to it. It's very well rendered, very well drawn. Um, it looks like you could hand this to an architect and say, build this. And they would have mm -hmm. no problem like building it. And I, and I love that about it. So well thought out of, you know, if, if you were going to have a graphic novel, um, where there's going to be multiple scenes and like the characters are interacting with this. It's very easy to like not get lost in the details of like what's happening there. So good job with that. I want to point out one little rendering thing there um, that, that, that Joel did really well. That roof, you know, uh, David Hone is just finishing the advanced perspective class. And one of the questions that we got and wanted to include in that was how do I handle uh, repeating texture like a brick wall or, or a, a thatched roof or something like that where you're not drawing every square. Look how that roof is handled. It's all there, but it's not just a bunch of interlocking squares like you had to draw each one. You know what I mean? There's a little bit of fade in and fade out. Like um, an implied texture. Implied, almost. yeah. Simplified, stylized, implied, um, whatever you want to call it. That's, that's how you do it. And who's the name on this one? Sorry, I didn't see. This is Kelly. Kelly, all right. Um, beautiful little ship. These things, I want. I'd love to see um, who did. Who did? Who built their set? Kyle. Yeah. Was the one who. 
I'd love to see this built out because all these look like just amazing little models. And, um, and this one's no exception. It looks like it's solid in form. Uh, and then to have all the flowers and stuff, you got something that's really masculine, like this, this kind of pirate boat, you know, that just goes with, with dudes. And then we've got this kind of delicateness to it that's been added to it to turn it into this end. So I kind of love that balance of, of, of playing with them. Um, hard shapes and then and then that kind of delicacy too it's really really pretty cool i'm gonna launch that poll i want to stay there that would that would make a million dollars on an airbnb yeah it would <laughs> we have a shire Definitely. here like somebody built the shire in tennessee there's like five shire oh. huts I don't know it's what that what i've been seeing like on social media a bunch lately i think there's probably more than one but there's the one in just here in tennessee is incredible. Yeah, yeah, this year. Yeah, a little hobbit hole. That's a good good way to describe it, Marion. Um, and so it's like 400 bucks a night to stay there, but uh, but it's worth it. Worth it. That's such a smart idea. Like if you had, if you had the money, you know, and you knew the, the right contractors and you maybe you were a developer or something, like to lean into the nerd, like that nerd market for Airbnb. Oh man, it's, it's booked out solid for the summer already i wonder how hard it would be like to hire some set designers from hollywood and build like the star trek set and turn that into an airbnb (laughs) make a fortune (laughs) all right you can charge anything all right let's see it It it's closer closer than than we've had before but we haven't had we haven't had a true battle no been pretty lopsided every time it's been been one clear winner you guys definitely know what you like this group, mm-hmm. you know, this group of voters. Yeah. So what would, what would have, what would have knocked this out of the park? What would have made this? Well, better? you got this real, you got this real rich lighting scenario, but then everything is, is bright. So it's almost like you turn the lights on, but this is on display inside a, a, a big box mm. store like Ikea. Yeah. This is how it would look. You really want to yeah. set the stage for that. I mean, if you went like with a deeper tone in the background and really played with that light glowing, uh, you wouldn't have to get, uh, it's not necessarily what I would call chalky. That's where you add just too much white to your local tones, but it starts to get into that world where you're, you everything's almost to mid to high value. And uh, it, the, the glow on this and the warmth it would have if we could really experience that lighting would go a long way. Yep, I agree. I back that up. Um, I, I, and with that, maybe um, all the shadows seem very airy and like airbrushed. And like, even in some places, there's no shadow. But like in here, they just, I think if there's like a stronger shadow, it, it might work better too. Just might be rendered a little bit better. Oh, wait. So okay. Robert, Robert was saying the, that one of the rules is it must be displayed in a white background. So maybe I take that back. It, wait, go back over there. Let me see. Or zoom out. Are all of them going to get some black background? Yep. That yeah, was one I guess, of the rules. I guess because of the dark value of some of these other ones, like the um, stump and because of Joel's, the dark value of the actual building accomplishes what I was saying. So that's all you do is you move the lights in front of something that's like a darker value or pull it off like a, like in this um, the B option here from Vell. It's, you know, you give yourself a dark value in any way you can and still fit the rules and then, uh, and then glow it up. Yeah. So here we have Ellen versus Brett and, uh, and I'll just dig right into to Ellen's. Um, so cool to like do the gingerbread, the gingerbread in, you know, the ginger, the ginger B and B. So another, another clever title for, for a name. Um, and this is just well done. Excellent job on texture and ha- just having it feel, um, rich and, and tasty. <laughs> you know, I could, I could smell this, right. So I think overall, just really creative, good idea. Only one I've seen uh, out of all the group that was ed- edible. So it's big, always gonna big win points for, us. For, being, um, <laughs> for being different. All and right, Brett. Awesome. Is, there, is there a, hold on, I got to move a window because I can't see if there's a sign somewhere. No sign on this one. 
Could this be called the Gone Fish In? Uh, that's good. The Gone, gone fish, fish In. I love it. <laughs> anyway, I, love it. Um, I think expert. we should get some, we, we should win Critique Arena for coming up with puns that no one else did. Let's give us ourselves a bonus and to keep Will out of it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> ragging on Will. He's not here. <laughs> Um, oh, Bill uh, Brett, or Brett says uh, it's called the Toadstool, and it's run by a family of toads. Nice, so, I like it. I, I definitely yeah. like it. Um, love the color balance on this thing. The little spots of red are so wonderful. Um, without that, I think it would have gone a little too cool and uninviting. But and that's what you want to do is, is like take. I always consider saturation to be like a habanero sauce, and that's how you make a meal, right? You make the meal. You put on a little habanero sauce where you need it. Um, and so that's what the color is here. Look where the color is, right at the front door. That's typically where you know people, people want to look. And um, mm -hmm. so I think it's a, it's a good call to do that. The fish is, is super interesting. May have backed off that smoke just a little bit, but I love that fish up there. I wonder if that could be repeated in, in other areas as it goes around. There's that technique for vignetting that Jake was talking about earlier where you have the path kind of feathering out. So that's always a great technique when you have an isolated object. Yep, very cool. All right, let's uh, zoom out here and launch that pole. Launch pole, that the pole, pole. launch three thousand. It's natural to oh, say. Okay, this is a battle. This is a battle today. Is it? Are they going at it? They're going at it. It's within two two. Oh, it's fifty fifty right now. Oh my goodness! Pull your car over and vote. <laughs> take the off ramp <laughs> i'm not going to turn this poll off until we've got at least a 92 percent um uh rate of participation where are we at now nine, 89 percent well, that's close so we and, need and like five more people to click their vote how close is it oh we got 92 i'm in in the poll i'm sharing the results wait it's 50 50 what do we do? We've never had that. No. Do we do it? Do we launch it again? <laughs> or do we do we decide? I don't do know. Do we decide? There's two of us. Hmm. We need three for this. We need Will. What do we oh, do? Oh, we can't do it because then people will be mad at us for which one we pick. And that's yeah, then it's on yeah. us again. We're gonna vote again. Let's vote again. Somebody's got to either somebody else votes or somebody else. Should we else say change. one thing we hate about each of them? <laughs> okay, let's do let's do a crit on each one of them. That'd be good. Okay, so essentially they both lost. They both won, but they also both lost. So they go both get a crit. All right. One thing on this one is, man, it is silhouette wise. It is just one big clump of stuff. And what I would love to have seen is going back to Drawing getting out my pen, Jake, getting out my pen. I would have loved to have seen, you, you know, something like, like this instead of a little more of a breakout, you know, what mm -hmm. you got there. Right. So mm -hmm. I think fixing that silhouette would have definitely given you one extra percentage point and you would have moved on easily. All right. What do you say? But this, about one, this one, the, everything's so intricate and our scale has been set up so expertly with these feathers and the, the sort of the mushroom details and everything that smoke's killing it for me because everything looks so carefully thought about and the smoke i just want to look at the smoke mm. smoke's like let's just get rid of it and see what that yeah, looks like just have like you can have a little feather of smoke coming out there or or i just think the the smoke would be yeah. yeah, give me a little, that. give me a, give me a little indication of smoke because I like that. I like okay. that it feels like something's happening. There we go. Yeah. Now we can, yeah. Now we can focus on. Don't go crazy on me. Um, <laughs> yeah, now, now we can focus on. See the difference. All right, we're mm. gonna vote again. And this time, I'm just going to leave it up for 30 seconds, regardless of who's voted. Okay. Just pull it at 30 seconds. Yep. Let me time it. I've got a timer right on here. Oh, okay. On the top of it, it's got a timer, and we're at, we're at 15 seconds. And it's amazing. Yep, that critique really. 
<laughs> the different really did it. Yep. And we're at 92% again. Wow, you guys. Okay. I'm sharing the results. Winner oh, goes wow. to Brett. He moves to the second. That's a really interesting little moment right there because is did that happen because we changed the shape of the smoke? All of a sudden it took out the offending shape, as it were, and then all of a sudden. Oh. I'd, love to, I'd love to I'd love to interview every single person that voted and get a sense Ellen's of what just happened. Ticked off now. We're gonna have to issue an, a public apology. But what's interesting about that is you guys see how important even a small detail. Everything has to work. It's almost like a uh, what would you say, like a symphony, maybe as an analogy. Like you can't have all the instruments playing well, and then the tuba just goes Bleh! and is out of you know out of tune or out of out of out of sync. And so, just gotta, okay. Gotta so we got Merrick symphony. and Safi. Uh, I believe this is Safi's first time in Critique Arena, maybe. Uh, I definitely don't remember this name, but if you have been, sorry. <laughs> Mark is actually uh, in our top Hall of Fame as a as a the third number three in the Hall of Fame. So Safi, you're going up against the Hall of Famer here. Um, so let's let's get into this. Uh, this is a witch hotel. I love it. I love the idea. This is the only really Halloween themed one we have. And um, there's just a lot of clever little details going on here. The, you know, the cat logo, there's cats hanging out, the parking for the brooms, the rendering. It's just a nice, it's just fun all around. So good job, Merrick. Yeah, super, super fun shapes. This is Safi's. Love the little snail details. I know we're supposed to be talking about the backgrounds, but the snail detail is so nice. The little watering hole or little feed kind of, kind of area. Um, what I love about this one is the delicacy of it. And I love to emphasize some of the drawings like this that you don't need. We always talk about, oh, you got to have a full range of contrast. You got to have a full range of color, full value. You got to paint it in Photoshop and you don't need any of that. I don't know if, I don't know if this is done in marker and pencil, but it's so delicate and, and well-controlled. And I love that little bit of atmospheric perspective behind that farthest one. Um, you move your mouse over. Oh, the one, this one? Yeah, the third one. See how it kind of goes lighter underneath there? Push it. If that thing was at full value, it would sit back and it would flatten those up. And so that's a great technique for sort of separating even short distance and, and, and compressed spaces is just kind of this like fake vignette. It's what we get to do that photographers don't get to do. And that's what I love about painting and drawing is we can yeah. kind of control that, that image. I like these little details at the top here too. Mm -hmm. All right, let's launch this poll. Poll master 3000. Here we go. We're at 142 people now. Nice, attending. we're gaining. And I think we have about 30 on on um, YouTube as well. 30? You mean 30,000? Well, Just yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> 30,000. <laughs> okay, I think we're at, I'm going to wait for two more people to vote. Put down your sandwich. Reach for the mouse, go over there, click A or B, you decide, and then we'll stop this. That's right, you you know who you are, holding the sandwich. Okay, there you go, we did it. <laughs> Let's see these results. Is it, you know, this one somewhat close, but it does go to Merrick. Yep. A difference I would say of, the, yeah, I would say the value, I mean, if we back out of those, you know, as I, as I say, the, you know, delicacy and, and all that stuff's beautiful. It's hard to win when you're pitted against super high contrast. If people see that on a wall, they'll almost always vote for a high contrast option. It's just because sort of human nature. That doesn't mean yeah. that you guys got to go high contrast. I don't want you to think, oh, I lost. So I need to be a high contrast painter now. This has its own charm. I think the only thing that held this back is the exact crit that Jake has done twice now, which is your silhouette is basically repeated like this would be fantastic with one main structure and then some supporting structures um, yeah like i want to see this one just be like this big mm -hmm. you know yep and and maybe exactly. it's got like a couple of like you know little windows or something 
I think that would have made, yeah, the, it made it, the it would, difference. I mean, yeah, it would have. And, and then also you got these, all these round shapes, the mushrooms are round, even the snails are round. So that gives you an opportunity for even like maybe a little picket fence or, or just something that's a little sharper, a little straighter to balance out that curve. Put one little snail over here too. Give me a little fence yeah. action. Oh, fence, yeah. Yeah, just some kind of little fence in there. Yeah, just something to break up those those round shapes. I mean, if you think of it like cooking, it's sort of like that. Like, oh, this is too, this is too sweet. We need to add some salt. And then you know, that's a. It's weird to use that analogy, maybe, but I think about it all the time. Like, oh, this shape, this is this image is too round. I need to add some straights, or vice versa. All right, let's blow through these second rounds. You guys know what you're voting for, so let's speed it let's up. Have at it. Yep. I can't remember. Somebody was asking about the honorable mentions. We're so late on this, and we didn't organize the file well enough to do it. But we'll do the honorable mentions um, the next month. You know, I could I could pull them up. I do have them. The big list, or the or the 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 one right before we pick the top sixteen. Uh huh. Yeah, okay. I have them. Um, let up, me see. Up to you here. if they're ready. We'll do it. We'll do it at the end. Does it sound good? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes people make it too, and then they're not subscribers, and then we go to the next round or the next, you know, the next image down. So yeah. don't don't forget about that. All right, I'm gonna end this poll. Oh wait, we're only at seventy five percent. I need I I just I need like just ten more people to. It's gotta to vote. be eighty percent. Gotta be eighty percent. Gotta be. You guys okay, vote. There we go. There you guys are go. holding these people's fate in your hands because the winner of these things gets to illustrate our podcast, gets paid for that, and uh, and then gets gets presented on the Critique Arena, Arena website permanently as a winner, and then gets a chance to maybe even compete at the end of the year against all the other winners in one special prompt. We did that last year. It was super fun. So Chris took that one, and I think – what it came down to for this is one of them is, I think one of them matches the, I don't know. I don't know what people were thinking, but for me, I think one of them does match the um, prompt a little bit better. No. How do you think, oh, like, as, as far as a fairy tale is, traveler? Yeah, this is like maybe a whimsical inn, but this is definitely a fairy tale traveler inn. You get what I'm saying? Sort of. I mean, that's specific though. You're saying like it needs to be like a recognizable fairy tale. There could be a fairy tale that goes with this setting. You're right. You're right. Boom. So who knows? All, <laughs> all said and done. If this was like um like an anchor piece in your portfolio and you did a series of like five different um it's five different uh, uh, appliances turned into buildings. I could see that going viral. Like I could see that being a thing that would get people's attention. Definitely. That's a great idea. Yeah. So don't let, don't get discouraged that you lost. Um, no, that's, that's pro level. That could be a fun book. Yeah. Just a, a full book actually is taking right. just household items and turn it into, into stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. Do it, do it, so, do it. Congrats, Chris. Who are you going to be up against, Chris? Let's see. Oh, this is, this is, I don't know how you guys are going to pick. Um, I don't know how you're going to pick this one. Oh, man. Look at that. They're so well matched. Yeah. They, are, they almost look like they're done. Same, same animation studio. Different artist in the same studio. Yeah, yeah. Valerie versus Melissa. And do take a chance anytime you can to like look at people's Instagram accounts and give them a follow. They, they definitely, every, everybody could use a, a, a new follower. Okay, we're at 82% voted. I'm in in the poll. I'm gonna share these results and we have a clear winner. Valerie moves on. Boom. She's gonna go up against Chris. Hey, you guys, you can, I see some people talking about moving the, you can grab the pole and move it wherever you want to with your, with your mouse. I don't, as long as you're on a laptop or something like that. I don't know. I don't know how it works on it. If you're on a phone. If, yeah. IPad. I think if you're on a tablet, it's, it's stuck in front of there. Oh, really? That's um, somebody raised their hand. I got a little notification there. Um, what is that? 
What the heck? I'm going to raise my hand. I just raised my hand too. Dave White raised his hand. <laughs> raise your hand again if that was I didn't, you. I didn't know that was a thing. David Bro um, raised his hand. I can't be Mandy. What, what does no, that mean? If he's raising I'm his getting hand. these. I'm getting hand raising notifications. <laughs> stop it, you guys. Stop it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, Melissa, here's why you lost. You ready for this? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I no, I do. Piece. Back up, back up just a little bit. And everyone, I want you to sort of blur your vision. What you're going to end up with is a gray mass in the middle, even though there's a little color to it. Just think value. It's all sort of in that middle range. Yeah, it needs yeah, to, yeah. it just needs a little more value control. Control where your darks are. If you look at John Klassen, that's that's one thing that's so good about him. And then I'll also pit him up against like Feng Zhu, the entertainment designer. What those two guys do, even though the styles are all over the place, is they really control where darks go in the image and the dark holds their whole image together. Uh, and then everything else can kind of work as it needs to. Um, well, you're just gonna increase the, the contrast. Yeah, there you go. Even even that starts to look look better. And the shadow is going a little dense there, but um, but you get what I'm saying. I think, I think just having, you can control also which local value you pick. It doesn't necessarily mean lighting has to be crazy. It just means uh, you can switch around your local value a little bit more. Yeah. So you could see the difference there. Yeah, it's just sort of grayed right. out. Yeah. Okay. Let's move up to these two. This is so much fun to watch these things. I love doing this. I do too. All right, Liz versus Jill. Let's relaunch it. Let's see what you guys think. The Tavern on the Marsh versus the Buzzin. Man, Buzzin. once we get to the these next tiers, man, everything's just so solid. And yeah, then I love you... that the ori the orientation of these two is is sort of the same. I mean, it's it's really it's really fun. It really is. Okay, I'm gonna erase his hand. David said he was doing a high five and not not just raising his hand. Oh, thank you, so David. Thanks so for we just left him. We just left him hanging. He's like the basketball player. It's like runs around like trying to get a high five and everyone's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Liz. She she pulled a sea biscuit and just went right Boom, out. Catapult. Yeah. I didn't see what the results were. It was ninety-seven to twenty-two. I'm going to chalk that up to, to all to creativity and, and mm -hmm. theme because this is so expertly done. Um, you know, it does exactly what I was saying earlier. It's like go dark with the local value or the shading, and then you can put your lights in there and kind of have them have that soft, warm glow. Uh, everything about it's great. The, the roof, like I said earlier, I love it. Um, there's one thing, though, that I would change in here, and this would be just a detail if we were, um, if I was voting on this, one of the details I would look at is the stairs indicate a certain kind of scale for somebody to be able to walk on those steps. That door is way too small for somebody who's walking on those steps, <laughs> they're unless jumping. they're jumping. They're jumping in between them. That's a good point. And I think, I think another problem here is you look at it from far away, it's got the contrast, but it doesn't have a focal point. You know where my eyes keep going? Up here. Where? Yeah, that's what I, that's you know, why I was coming. This is on the highest roof. area of contrast is this chimney. And what I, what I want you to do next time is think about where you want the eyes to look. You've got this stair, this cool staircase thing going up here. This whole thing should be in like light. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be half obscured. I'd say when you're doing environments, especially like a, like an inn like this, the golden rule of real estate, I'm a dabbler in real estate. I'm an amateur real estate sort of junkie. And even when you're selling real homes, the biggest focal point is going to be your front door. It's a big yeah. selling point to a home. And so I, I wish a lot of people leaned a little bit more into that, that entryway being inviting or being whatever you want it to be, but really putting some emphasis as a focal point onto that front door. All right. We've got Brett versus Merrick. And this time Brett is not getting draw over help. <laughs> The smoke stays in. <laughs> we'll see if that. We'll see if that helps. Well, now they now they can picture it without the smoke. But do you vote on pre-smoke or post-smoke? Yeah, pre or post. That's the question. Um, okay, this this one would make clearly... a good Halloween card. Um, oh, go ahead. 
I was just going to say, I'm going to end the poll a little early because I don't think any amount of waiting around is going to help. Um, and the winner goes to Danny Merrick. Tony. Do you think people are responding to characters? I mean, I know this piece would be fantastic without the characters, but does the characters give a little edge to somebody who included a character? I feel like it's a little bit of a cheat. Let's see here. The bees are in there. I mean, without That's the bees. That's true. Look at the, the top four. Characters, characters, characters. Except for... Just, just saying. Um, except for this one. But this one does have a bunch of little things to imply, you know, the characters just kind of stepped out. Well, see, that's the way to pull that off and still stick within the fairy tale in. Yeah. So I'm going to say just like, just like people, judges give orders to people who are on a jury to disregard information. You guys disregard the characters in these. It's not a character piece and nor is it a full illustration. It is a specific set yep. piece as a background. That's, that's a good, yeah. Disregard the characters. Look at, Judge it based on it as a as an environment Very, as a yeah. as a set piece. Okay, Otherwise, so we're, gonna, we're gonna call contempt of this court. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you guys ready for this? Let's relaunch it. And Launch that pull. Boom. Okay. Oh, this is. It's fifty-one percent to forty-nine percent right now. So this is a close one. It really is. I mean, I don't know which one I would pick either. <laughs> it's tough when it gets to this level, for sure. Yeah. We are, because it's so close, I'm going to wait to the 92% voted thing, which is just five more percentage points. Wow. kind of need like three more people to vote probably. And then I'm going to see those three votes can change anything because it's so stinging close. And okay, we're done. And the winner is Chris. Mm, that Atkins. was so close. <laughs> I think people are naturally drawn to red. You know, if you look at, at stop signs and other things like that, I mean, they're made, you instantly notice red, that red's gonna hold in terms of interest. If you look at the mm -hmm. other piece compared to that, it almost needs, uh, it needs that spot, like you were saying, where we're supposed to look. It's almost too even from corner to corner. There's not yeah. one dominant thing, and I think that would help it quite a bit. Although Maybe I do like, like that it's lighter at the door, at the front door, like I was saying. What if it had like little flowers in the? Mm, in the me likey, drawing with Jake. See how much that adds. I mean, it's so that adds so much, so easy too. And then it gets away from that monochromatic kind of. Uh, Middle tone, and then maybe earth like, tones. Um, maybe the signs red, just to pull it in together, and maybe Valerie the shutters. said she had those in her sketch. Isn't isn't that frustrating when you got it in your sketch? You're like, oh, should I? I should have left it in. I think that that would do it. Oh, me likey. Doesn't that 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 just does it? Wow, amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris, you are a Critique Arena winner, which means your piece is going to be highlighted on the Critique Arena website. So congratulations. Great work, Chris. Okay. Oh, man. I'm going to launch oh, this poll. Let's see. I do not Let's want one of these guys... to lose. I know. Huh? I do not want. I don't know which one to win on this. Normally, I have sort of an inkling. And yeah, I'm wrong a lot as well. But uh, I really don't know on this one. They're different styles. Mm -hmm. Uh but again, rate it on the, the creativity and the design of the actual structure and not necessarily. Not the characters. Um, well, luckily, luckily, both of them have this, you know, a bunch of characters in there. So it doesn't matter Yeah, as much on, as much on this one. This is yeah. sort of like me on the left pitted against Jake on the right. I could see like hallmarks <laughs> is, of both of our stuff. It is. Well, <laughs> I'm going to share the poll and uh, we'll see. We'll see who actually who actually won. All right, three oh, out wow. of four votes go to the buzz in Liz Orton, dethroned Merrick. 
boy. That that was a battle of the titans right there. I thought both those images are so incredibly well done. Um, I think Merrick's is, is absolutely pro level. I wouldn't say it needs to change anything before sending out stuff to clients. I think that if this image will A, get client work and B, if you made it into a Halloween card, I just found out this year, by the way, that people send Halloween cards. I never knew that. Um, what? Yeah, they do. And this would make a fantastic Halloween card. Although I would have some witches flying around. If it's going to be a witch hotel, they're going to arrive there on the brooms. A little silhouette yeah. up top. Can you, can you draw a little silhouette of a, of a flying witch up there? You got it. You got Maybe it. A little, little silhouette. Hold on. Where's my... Just do... Uh... There we go. All right, by the way, when we suggest you guys do commercial projects with these, we do reserve the right to get about 50% of the profits, right? Yep, just so you know. Just so you know. It's this standard practice, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't read the contract. Just know, just send us 50% for uh, that light bulb in book. And I'm having too much fun now. Merrick's card, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, you two. I'm really happy with this. Yeah. I'm really happy. Killer. I mean, I feel like the people who won, who should have won, won, you know? It's amazing. So, yep. Yeah. It's amazing. But back up, and I mean, just the, like I said earlier, the quality here was a step above. This is the new level, in my opinion. This is the benchmark that we're at now. I want to see you guys here or, or even push it farther. I, I don't know how you could push it farther, to be honest. I think well, all these are pro. The next, uh, the next assignment is to do a, a full page illustration. So I'm excited to see, and, and I don't know what the exact prompt is, but it's supposed to be your traveler is in a situation. Did you or Will give them an exact prompt? Will did. Will did. Do you remember what it was? I didn't see what it was. I don't know specifically what it is, but the question that people are going to ask is, do I have to use this environment for next time or this, this in or whatever. I would say, no, if you don't, if you want to change something, change it, make a new thing. We're not going back and checking what you did for the character design or whatever. Just make something new, make something great. And I mean, as you guys go through this, you should be learning. So uh, I wouldn't expect it to be stay the same each time. Yeah. And just remember um, if you want to win, if, if winning critique arena is more important than you than like, building a portfolio <laughs> and getting work. I don't know. <laughs> I think the two kind of go hand in hand, but in some, in some instances, yeah. Um, just because you lose doesn't mean your work's not valuable, but cute always wins. Um, high contrast always wins. Color structure. Pop. Yep. A little color pop and, and good structure and good, like crisp um, edges. So Yep, that's would, pretty much the ingredients those. right there. We should make a critique arena checklist. Yeah, but then you know? somebody will thwart it. Somebody will do something totally different and win the whole thing. So, I, I mean, I don't think there's there's rules that are that solid, but those are definitely good guide guidelines. Well, I mean, go look at your. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop share and I'm gonna reshare um, this. Hold on. I'm going to reshare the critique in the website. So you, you guys yeah. see this props to you, Jake, for, by the way, for doing this, you and did you work on it with Austin? Yep. Austin. Well, actually, if you go to the website here, you can go down and look at about, and we have everybody who worked on it here. So Jody, Lisa, Austin, and me, and you can go check out their uh, Instagram or websites, but um, if you go to, um, let's say last month or March, I guess you could look at these winners. You could see who won. You could see who the top 16 were. These are all the different fairy tailors. Look, there's Kyle's alligator. Mm -hmm. You could see who, what all the submissions were. So the people that didn't quite make the top cut, um, and you could just look at it and see like, okay, I could see what's getting picked, what's not getting picked. So here's the last, um, this was a spot illustration that, that we did uh, in February. Mm -hmm. And you could see what won. 
you know, there's some contrast there. There's, you know, crisp edges. You can see who made it to the top 16. So educate yourselves. Look at what, look at what wins. That's and point. you're going to give yourself an edge. Do a little bit of homework. It's a great point. Yep. Look, there's Merrick. Third, third most contests won. If, if, uh, if Merrick had won today, um, it would have been tied with Braden, who's won four. Mm. So actually, no, would have, would have gone ahead of Braden because see this asterisk? It means an all-star challenge. Um, so oh, we have gotcha. our all-stars at the end of the year, and we count that as like two. So, Very cool. Yep. All right. All right, you guys can't wait to see what you do next uh, next time. Love seeing the work this this time. If you haven't signed up to childrensbookpro.com, please go sign up there. We're going to be updating that and showing you all kinds of cool stuff. We have, I think, two more videos that haven't come out yet for the free ones, and so you can sign up and see those as well. Yep. Yep. I think it's good. All right, should we should we call it a day? Call it a day. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next Bye, time.